Time for some gulp action. Hello everyone, Texas Fishhead here again. I hope and pray that everyone is doing good. Today I'm going to show you how I rig up to catch flounder using gulp. I do a lot of jetty fishing. And the jetties are something uh, that they were put out basically to protect the beach. And if you go down to Galveston, you'll see there's quite a few small jetties. And then, of course, you got your big south jetty and your big north jetty. Those jetties were actually built almost like a pyramid. It starts off with a layer of granite blocks. And then it builds up to, pull to what you see above the water, what you walk actually on above the water. So the majority of the jetty itself is underwater. So there's a lot of rocks, granite, and different things that are built up down there. You get all types of uh, shell and things that grow on it, barnacles and things like that. So fishing for flounder, like I like to do along the jetties, is a little different than if you were fishing for flounder out in the bay. In the bay, they are on hard sand or maybe uh, soft mud, or they're hanging out around the edge of uh, grass in some drains waiting for something to come out and ambush them. So throwing jigs like this, to me, I think it's, it's perfect to be using out in the bay. But when you're fishing along the jetties, I can't tell you or even put a number as to how much money I've lost hooking up rigs and baits and things and getting them stuck on the end of the jetties. <clears throat> now, the rig that I'm going to show you is something that I I call it the 95% weedless rig. Now, weedless is a word that's used in bass fishing for baits that won't get hung up in the weeds because we don't get any weeds out here unless we get sea, sea uh, grass and things like that. But Along the jetties, you've got rocks and barnacles and just about anything you can get hung up on. And the reason I say it's a 95% rig is because you got that other 5% of people who will take their line when they get hung up, pop the line, cut the line off, and leave the line out of the water. And then uh, you'll see them uh, strip their reels, or you, and you'll see the line all in between the rocks. And, <clears throat> and the high tide comes in and washes that stuff out. So I'm sure as if you do a lot of fishing around the jetties, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, so this, this will get hung up on one of those. Uh, also, you get those people who will take a cast net, leave it out there if they get hung up on a rock and not pull it out. I actually found a, a rescued a 10 foot cast net simply by pulling it out, popping a few lines and actually I repaired it and put it together. But, a 10-foot uh, casting is just a, just too much of a casting for me, but hey, they're pretty expensive, so I got one. But first of all, let me start off by showing you, I'll take, once again, the small swivel. I like using these small swivels in, in my other how-to video. You, you can uh, see why I use, uh, use them. And then you take a line. I'll cut usually anywhere between 24 to 30 inches worth of line. You can use whatever you feel comfortable with. Usually I use a, either a 20 or a 30 pound leader wire, or I mean line, or a monofilament. But you always want one end to be longer than the other. You want at least a difference of a six, seven, eight inches maybe in between both. Now this type of rig is not anything that's new as far as the double rig. This thing has been around quite a long time. Uh, I used to use, uh, I used to fish mainly for flounder and I would use spec rigs. The Lime True spec rig used to work perfect out in the bays when I did a lot of weight fishing. I took my swivel, put it in, I made a loop. 
tied it in place. Now you got two ends. The first thing I do is I'll take a one eight ounce egg shape weight. You can use one sixteenth, use whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. Then I'll take a red bead. I've got different size beads, but I prefer the smaller ones. You can use the larger ones if you like. I prefer the small ones. Once that's in place, I will take that same double out hook that I use when I use for live bait fishing. And once again, it's a worm hook. I'll take that, put it on the end. I'll secure it. Tie it on a couple of times. In through one more time just to be to make it a little stronger. Pull it, cinch it. Now I've got it. Oh, trim the edge. Now what I've got is a setup like this. The B weight also makes noise when it clacks. Do the same thing to the other end. Same thing with the bead. Same thing with the hook. five, six times, in, through, one more time, make it nice, cinch, trim off the edge, and now what I've got, is a double rig. So, wait, and the beads. Then what I do is I'll take my gulf. I've got several different colors I use. This is the new penny coat. The new penny color I've caught, I don't know how many fish I can have. I've caught plenty of fish on this new penny color. It's one of my favorite ones. What you do is you take it, just like you would a worm, bite all along the nose, pull it, look for the place, where you're going to put the point in. And now what you've done is basically set up a weedless bait. Even though you're not showing the point, a fish will come, or bite, squeeze, and when it does, they get, they'll hang on. Do the same thing to the other. This is one of my favorites as well, the lime. If you see, if you see my videos, I use a lot of this is the lime one, the color one. But I'm going to show you a jerk shed. One trip I took, all I wanted to do was eat jerk shed. Same thing here. Once again, through. Now, this one has a slit where you can actually set it into the nose. Once again, if you're going to use this type of rig, fantastic. But what I'm using them for is to fish around the edge of the jetties. I look for where the hook will come out, go through it, make sure it comes out to the other side. Another weedless setup here. Now you have two weedless baits coming through.
And you can do that with either one of these. Any any one of these type of gulps that you want to use. And I'm gonna tell you something about flounder that at least I've come to find out or learn. This double rig works, for, first of all, for a couple of reasons. Flounder, when they're aggressive and they're eating, especially when the tide is moving, this thing comes swimming by. They're opportunistic feeders. So they're sitting along the edges of the rocks waiting for something to flush out in between the rocks. Once again, if you see my, if you see my flounder videos, you'll see that I'm walking along the jetty, casting parallel to the jetty along the edge of the rocks. When the flounder are aggressive and they're feeding, they're going to hit the first thing that comes by. See, this is what they see, the first thing that comes by. And they'll jump, and most of the time you'll find out, you'll see that the flounder hit your first bait before he hits the second one. The reason he hit the first bait is because they're aggressive and they're feeding. Now, when you're in between tides and things have slowed down, and you're still looking for the flounder because they're still in there, what the flounder will see is the first bait go by, it's like a teaser. When this first bait goes by, then the second one swing by, and they're not going to turn down an easy bait, an easy meal. So that's why this type of rig works, especially for flounder. First one goes by, second one comes through, and you're going to find out that they're going to be biting the second bait through when the fish are not really aggressive in feeding because either the tide is slack or the tide is not moving. They hit the first one, they're on a feeding mode. They hit the second one, they're sitting around waiting for some easy bait to come by. And that's what this thing, that's why it works. I also set up one that I use if I don't want to throw a double bait, it's just a single cup of rig here. Now once again, I hope this information helps you how when you're out there fishing. This is a rig that I use. This is a setup that I use when I'm fishing for flounder. When I'm fishing for flounder around the jetties. I hope this thing will work for you. And I hope everyone stays safe. I want to thank you once again for watching. Thank you for your views. Thank you for your subscriptions. And continue to click like and subscribe. Till we see each other soon. Thanks.